Amen. Good morning, everyone. Praise the Lord. We say praise the Lord to everyone and good morning again. Thanking God for another blessed day in the land of the living. So we're grateful to be before your presence. We still are grateful for this virtual uh, service that we're having. And uh, in not many days in our future, hopefully we will be uh, in a physical location where we are able to hold service and, then, and still those that want to tune in virtually, it'll be great. Amen. So we are just grateful for God for another opportunity, another wonderful Sunday to come before your presence and being in his presence. Uh, so we're grateful. We're going to open up our morning service with prayer and just want to remind everyone Please, uh, you can send an email if you'd like to. You can direct messages on Facebook. Uh, you can call the church office. However you see fit to contact us, please feel free to do so if we may be of service to you in the Lord. Amen? Amen. So we're here to minister on behalf of the Lord according to the Lord's will. Amen. To help mankind. So please give us a call, direct messages, or email us however you see fit. If you need counseling, if you need prayer, uh, if you need to be baptized in water, uh, if whatever your spiritual needs are, please give us a call. Once again, we're just delighted uh, to be alive and well one more Sunday. Amen. To come before your presence with the presence of the Lord on the inside of us to uh, minister the word to you, amen, words of encouragement, words of enlightenment, uh, that your soul would be blessed, amen. So we're going to open up our service with prayer, and we're going to ask everyone who can, bow your head and close your eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we come before your presence one more time to say thank you, Lord Jesus. Things may not be as we desire them, but Lord, we thank you because you've been wonderful to us. You've given us everything that we need. Amen. And if there are some things that we still need, we know that you will supply because you told your people, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto us, Lord Jesus. We thank you for your provision. We thank you for your protection. Most of all, we thank you for such a great salvation and to be a Live in the land of the living, that we might serve you and praise you one more day. Lord, you're certainly worthy of all our praise. Any yeah. glory that uh, we can give, we want to give it back. Any great and wonderful things you've done in our lives, you deserve all the glory. You deserve yeah. all the praise. And so, Lord, we give you the glory, amen, for all the wonderful yeah. things that you have done in our lives, the things that you continue to do, Lord yeah. Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for this opportunity to share your word, Lord Jesus, with the world. One thing about COVID, and even before COVID, Lord, you have set up a medium whereby we can preach your word, administer your word, teach your word, Lord Jesus, encourage mankind, mankind across this entire world because of the technology. So we thank you for the technology on today. Yeah. Lord, we ask that you continue to bless your people, yeah. Lord Jesus, continue to bless every preacher that you've sent out, Lord Jesus, to shed light in this darkened world, Lord. We ask your help upon the governmental leaders, our president, yeah. that you will bless them, Lord Jesus. Bless this world, bless this nation, Lord. We thank you for the great United States of America that you have allowed us to be here, Lord Jesus. We thank you for this country. We ask your blessings upon this country. And Lord, we remember your word. We know that we can always have joy because the joy that you give, the world didn't give it and it can't take it away. But sometimes in this life, we have sorrows. And so, Lord, we ask that if there's anyone who's sorrowing on this morning, that you would lift up their countenance, that you would comfort them, that you would give them peace, that you yeah. would give them grace, Lord Jesus. Lord, bless, Lord Jesus, those that are mourning on this morning because of the loss of loved ones due yeah. to COVID or whatever illness or sickness or for whatever reason, Lord Jesus. Yeah. We ask that you comfort those that are mourning on this morning. And we know that even in the midst of our sorrow, we still can have joy as a people of God. Yeah. Lord, we thank you for all of your provision visions, all that you have done, all that you're going to do. We ask that you would open up our hearts this morning to receive your word, open up our understanding, open up our ears, our spiritual ears. Help us to be doers of the word and not hearers only, Lord Jesus. We ask yeah. that you would save someone. Lord yeah. Jesus, you came on the earth to die for those that were lost and all mankind was lost. So you want to see everyone saved. Lord, let somebody reach out and say, what must I do to be saved? Lord, save according as you will, Lord yeah. Jesus. Add to the church today as you see fit. We yeah. thank you for all things in the precious and the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. So we thank you again for this Sunday morning. Amen. And our title should be on the screen. Um, our first scripture is going to come from Isaiah chapter 54. And as I mentioned a little bit earlier, and we will put information up on our Facebook page, and we will also make flyers, but uh, in the month of October, we will have in-person meetings on Sundays only. Amen. So we will temporarily have our Sunday meetings, um, and maybe you're familiar with it, but Monroe Senior High School. So that's where we plan to be. Amen. But we will give more information because it doesn't start at the beginning of October, but we will give the date. Amen. We will still hold our Wednesday evening Bible studies uh, virtually. Amen. Just a little bit of information. Okay, if you have your Bibles, uh, however you have your Bibles, if it's on your smart device, if it's a regular Bible, however, uh, would you turn with us to Isaiah chapter 54? We're going to read one verse out of that particular scripture. And then hold that and go to the book of Philippians. We're going to read one verse out of the book of Philippians. And we will conclude our scripture reading in the book of Ephesians. Okay, so it will be Isaiah 1 verse, Philippians 1 verse, and Ephesians 1 verse. Amen. And we'll give you a little moment, a little while to grab those scriptures. Those books, rather, of the Bible. Amen. Amen. Isaiah 54, we're going to read verse 17. So when you have it, please say amen. 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 And it reads Isaiah 54 and 17. It says, the word of the Lord says, amen, not the word of the preacher, but the word of the Lord said, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's go to Philippians chapter number 1. And we're going to read verse number 6. Philippians 1 and 6. Amen. And it reads, the word of the Lord reads, amen? Being confident of this very thing that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. And our last scripture will come from Ephesians chapter number 6 and we will read verse 16. Amen. So it may not be a long message on today but uh, the point is to get the point across and make it clear. Amen? Ephesians 6, chapter 6, verse 16, and it reads, Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all of the fiery darts of the wicked. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, from these portions of scripture, we draw our topic on today, which should be on your screen. Be encouraged. Amen? Be encouraged. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. Amen? Amen? Amen. And so from these portions of scripture, we, t we draw that topic. But if you can kind of um, get an idea of just from reading the scriptures, it's talking about weapons here. It's talking about fiery darts and things of that nature. So we can kind of guess that we're talking about a warfare. Amen? If, if we're talking about weapons and weapons formed against people and fiery darts of the wicked, uh, then there must be a war going on somewhere. So uh, from the beginning of time, uh, and even before time, uh, there's a war of good versus evil, right? We know that God is good. He's, all, he's righteous, but uh, there is an enemy called Satan, amen? Uh, he wanted the praise and the worship of God and, and thought that he could sit his throne, you know, above God. Uh, I don't know how he even imagine that, but iniquity was found in him and he was cast out to earth, right? And so he deceived mankind and mankind fell in 
to sin, but there's a war because Satan wants something that was never his and that he doesn't deserve and still trying to take it. Amen. And so there's a war. So there are forces of evil that are going now against the people of God and against the servants of God. So we start off in the book of Isaiah. Now we know that the book of Isaiah was written by the prophet Isaiah called by God uh, to be God's spokesperson. And he's speaking to the children of Israel, amen? Abraham's descendants. Abraham is known as the father of the faithful, amen? And so he walked out by faith, listening to the voice of God and God directing him. And so we know that uh, he and his wife did not have children, but God promised them Isaac, and Isaac did come forth in their old age, amen? The miracle in and of itself, amen? And then Isaac bare Jacob and Esau, but Jacob was called to be the patriarch, amen? The 12 tribes of Israel are Jacob's children, amen? So we know that Jacob's name was changed from Jacob to Israel, amen? And the Lord blessed the children of Israel as his chosen people, amen? Amen. And so here in the book of Isaiah, uh, it, it summarizes, or it talks of things that, of the messages that God had given Isaiah for the people. Amen. And so in this particular verse, it's written to the righteous. Amen. The people of God. Now we know the children of Israel had some challenges. They would serve the Lord for a while and then they would backslide. They would go away. They would serve idols. But even with all that, God had to punish them. Amen. Because they disobeyed his word and he is a God of righteousness. Even though they were his people, they went astray. Amen. And God chastened them. Amen. But at this point, we see that God is speaking to them and he's, he's bringing, he's, he's speaking words of encouragement to them. He says, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. Amen. We're talking about the people of the Lord, the servants of the Lord. And the Lord goes on to declare, and their righteousness is of me, said the Lord. So the people of God don't stand in their own righteousness. We know the word lets us know that our righteousness is as filthy rags. Amen. So if we don't have the righteousness of God. We have nothing. All we have is filthy rags. But God spoke a word of encouragement to his people after punishing them. And not only that, but he prophesied on life, what life will be like for them in a future state. Amen? Amen. So uh, we know that we are in a warfare. Amen? So if, there's, if we're talking about no weapons being formed, then that means we have an enemy somewhere. And so we know that the Bible lets us know that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world. Remember, Satan is a spirit. Amen? Amen. Uh, but we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So even though it appears our uh, uh, conflict is with another person, but it really isn't. It's deeper than that. But against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Okay. And so the goal of those evil forces is to defeat Christ's church. Amen. So any of the people of God, the, those evil forces are coming to defeat God's creation, mankind. Amen. Goes back to the beginning when certain, when the serpent, the devil went to Eve. Amen. And so it goes back. So the goal of those evil forces that are in this atmosphere, in this world, is to defeat Christ's church and Christ's servants. Amen. But we are assured of victory, but we must engage in the struggle until Christ returns. So there's a war, you know, so the war is against the evil forces, amen, Satan and his forces, amen, to go against God's righteousness, God's servants, amen? amen. And we have to know that the struggle is real, amen? This is not something that we fantasize with. Somebody might say, well, they preach about, you know, getting the victory every other Sunday. Well, the struggle is real. The devil doesn't stop. He may leave us for a season individually, but he's going to fight this fight until the end because he doesn't want God to get any glory. Amen. He still wants the worship and he still wants the glory. So he lost his place in heaven and he's trying to stop anyone who's trying to get there not to get there. Amen. 
So the evil forces are real, amen. The struggle of the church fighting against these evil forces is real. So we hear people make a, a statement nowadays, say the struggle is real. Well, the struggle is real. It's real. And so we do, but we want to be encouraged, amen, because when you're in a battle, you're in a warfare, uh, sometimes it might seem like you're being defeated. But you have to understand you're not defeated. Amen. So be encouraged. So God wants his people to know today to be encouraged. The weapons may be forming. Amen. But the Bible says they're not going to ultimately prosper. Amen. Because God is going to give us victory. And when he comes back, if we are still in faith in him, we're going to have the victory as his people. Amen. But we must continue in faith. Amen. It says above all, taking the shield of faith where we we shall be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked because the wicked send some fiery darts, amen, but by our faith we can quench all the things that come against us, amen. God has given us something to fight with. The Bible lets us know also, for though we walk in the flesh, we are in this natural flesh, we do not war after the flesh. So we don't go get guns and sticks and battles and, and, and whatever it is that people use for a natural warfare, but he said for our weapons, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not physical. It's not carnal. But our weapons are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Amen. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is filled. But that lets us know the weapons uh, for us people of God, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So we can pray, you know, and that's that's a weapon, amen. We can praise God even in the midst of our struggles. That's a weapon, amen. The enemy get confused. Wait a minute, I threw my best shot at them, and they're still praising God, still giving God the glory, amen. They're still praying, amen. So the weapons of our warfare are not carnal like the world, but we are in a war, amen. But God wants every child of God to know to be encouraged. God doesn't want you walking with your head hung down. He said, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and let the King of glory come in. Amen? So God wants his people to be in encouraged because no weapon that's formed against you shall prosper. It might look like it's going to prosper, but God said it won't prosper. Amen? Amen. So beginning in the book of Isaiah, he says, sing, O barren woman that did not bear Break forth into singing and cry aloud that does not travail with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, said the Lord. He said, enlarge the place of thy tent. So he's prophesying unto Israel. Let them know, enlarge your place and let them stretch forth the curtains of thine habitations. Spare not, lengthen thine cords and strengthen thy stakes. For thou shalt break forth. On the right hand and on the left. So God was telling Israel, you're going to break forth on the right hand and on the left. And thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles and make desolate cities to be inhabited. So you're going to inhabit some place. Amen. He told them not to fear. You shall not be ashamed. Neither shalt thou be confounded. For thou shalt not be put to shame. So anybody that calls on the name of the Lord, God's going to make sure we're not ashamed. Amen. Now he's talking to the children of Israel in the Old Testament, but we know in the New Testament, God has people also, Jews and Gentiles. And so God makes promises to his children. Amen. We are the seed by faith. Amen. Spiritual children. For thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth. He's talking to natural Israel at this time. And shall not remember the reproach of thy widowhood anymore. For thy maker is your husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. The Lord of all the armies, that's his name. Thy redeemer, the holy one of Israel. The God of the whole earth shall he be called. Because that's what he is. For the Lord hath called thee as a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit. A wife of youth when thou wast refused, said God. So she was like... Uh, Israel was like a wife that was taken in by a husband and he rejected her. Amen. Didn't want him. He, but Jesus, God said to Israel, he said, for a small moment have I forsaken thee. Amen. So he forsook them for a small moment. Why? Because of their sin. Amen. They had to be punished for the sin. He said, but with great mercies will I gather you. I'm going to bring you back to me. He said, in a little wrath I hid my face from thee for a moment. I was angry with you because you disobeyed my word. But with everlasting kindness will I have mercy on you, said the Lord thy Redeemer. For this is as the waters of Noah unto me. 
For as I have sworn that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth, so have I sworn that I would not be wroth with thee, nor rebuke thee. And so here he, was, he brought up Noah because he made a promise to Noah, a covenant with Noah, after he flooded the earth, amen, and destroyed all mankind except those that were in the ark, eight people and then the animals, amen. And he said he would never again destroy all mankind with the flood. So he made a promise, a covenant, and he sealed it with the rainbow. But he said, my covenant that I'm making with you right now is just as that covenant that I made with Noah. He said, so God made a covenant of peace at this time with Israel, his people. Amen. He said, for the mountains shall depart and the hills shall be removed. But my kindness, in other words, his mercy and his kindness shall not depart from thee. Neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, said the Lord. See, he made a covenant of peace with Israel, said the Lord that had mercy on thee. Amen. He said, O thou afflicted, tossed with tempest and not comforted. Behold, I will lay thy stones with fair colors and lay thy foundations with sapphires. I will make thy windows of a gates and thy gates of carbuncles and all the borders of pleasant stones. So he said, I'm going to beautify you. Amen. And all thy children shall be taught of the Lord. So he's prophesying on Israel, future state. All thy children shall be taught of the Lord. And great shall be the peace of thy children. Amen. And so we studied a few weeks back that God still has a rest for the children of Israel. Amen. He's just waiting for the fullness of the Gentiles uh, time to be taken care of. But God has not forsaken Israel. Amen. Because he made a promise to Abraham. He said, but in righteousness shall thou be established and thou shall be far from oppression, prophesying of the peace upon Israel. For thou shalt not fear and from terror, for it shall not come near thee. But he makes a statement here. He said, Behold, they shall surely gather together. Now you think these are God's people, or people will know to leave God's people alone, but not so. He said, Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. So just like the people of Israel had enemies, the people of God, the Christians today have enemies, amen? People will gather together. They think they're doing God a service to come against you, not understanding that you belong to God and God's will is being perfected in you, amen? But they make it their business to fight against you for whatever reason, and we know it's because of the darkness, amen? He said, behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. So when they come against you now, he's telling Israel, if they come against you, it's not because I sent them. Now, we know uh, in former times, God did send the Assyrians, he did send Babylonians, you know, to take his people captive because of their sin. But he's letting them know when they come against you in the future, it's not because I have sent them to punish you. It's because they're evil and they're wicked. Amen. Amen. He said, but they're going to come together, but it's not going to be by me. I'm not sending them. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. So they're going to fall. So people don't realize when they come against the people of God, they're going to fall. They think that they have all victory and all power, but they don't know that they're pretty much shooting themselves. Amen. He said, behold, I have created the smith and the blower. Uh, that the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. And I have created the waster to destroy. So I already got things set up where I'm going to take against, take care of those that call themselves going to form themselves against you. He goes on to say, no weapon that is formed against thee shall proper. So no matter what weapon there is, that's formed, God says, it's not going to prosper against you. Amen? He said, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, anybody that think they have a right to judge God's people, they shall be condemned. Amen? So they call themselves condemning you in judgment, but they themselves will be condemned. Amen? And he said, this is a heritage of this. This is what the servants of the Lord can expect because this is how I'm going to take care of my servants, my people. And their righteousness, again, is of me, said the Lord. I have given them righteousness, not their own righteousness. But when I forgive somebody and I make them right with me, they're righteous. Amen. And so we know through the New Testament when we're baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that we take on his righteousness, no more having our own righteousness. So God is letting us know today to be encouraged because 
because no weapon that's formed against us is going to prosper. Now, maybe before he allowed some things to happen if we didn't walk in his word, but he says, once you've made right with me, you made peace with me, you repented, turned around, he said, no weapon that's formed against you is going to prosper. And so that's what the people of God, we have to look to God's word to have victory because if we don't, we're going to be discouraged, amen? And we're going to think God has forsaken us, but we find life and strength in his word. He said, be encouraged. So the message on today is be encouraged. No weapon that's formed against you shall prosper. So the evil forces may be forming some weapons, but they're not going to prosper. Amen? Amen. So now when we say it's not going to prosper, it's not going to defeat you in performing the will of God. Amen? Hallelujah. It's not going to defeat us. It's not going to destroy us. They may form some weapons, but remember when Jesus Christ came, he told them, he says, um, the gates of hell are not going to prevail. He said, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. So God is going to have a church. He has a church and he's building this church and the gates of hell and the evil forces, the gates of hell will not prevail. They're not going to get the victory. Amen. It might seem like it. Now, if we walk in this walk and we might step out of the word of the Lord at one point and we lose a battle. Well, if you lose a battle, that doesn't mean you have to lose the war, right? Amen. You can still get back up, dust yourself off, repent, and say, Lord, I'm still on the winning side. Amen. God has promised you victory, so be encouraged. No weapon formed against you is going to prosper. Amen. So when you're doing the work of the Lord, once you're saved and you're trying to live right, trying to do all the best that you can, and not only that, God gives us assignments. We all individually have purpose in life. Amen. And so even in our assignment, the enemy tries to overthrow us. Not only does he try to overthrow us in our personal walk of sanctification with the Lord, we know how he did uh, Jesus Christ. Even when Jesus Christ was on the earth, remember how the devil came to tempt him. Amen. But every time the Lord put the word on the devil. And so that's what we have to do. So the enemy will try to overthrow us through temptation, first of all. But if he can't overthrow us with temptation, then he tries to stop the work of the Lord. Amen. By any means necessary. But God is letting us know, be encouraged. He cannot stop the work. Just keep walking by faith. Keep living for God by faith. And God is going to do what he said he was going to do. Uh, we go, um, God tells us how to actually fight this fight, amen, because God wants us to know God doesn't start a work and doesn't finish it, amen. So in the book of Philippians, uh, he said, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. So God is going to keep on working in his service. He's given us assignments. He's told us what to do. He's told us that we are his children through his word once we have obeyed the word and we have become uh, fellow citizens with the children of God and we have a place waiting for us in heaven. But while we're down here, we have to live for him. We have to witness for him. We have to work for him. Amen. So we're going to live for him. We're going to witness for him. We're going to work for him. And so the enemy doesn't like that. Amen. So Paul wrote to the Philippians. He said, uh, Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ to the saints in Christ Jesus, which are at Philippi with the bishops and the deacons. He told them, said, grace be to you and peace. So God gives us grace and he gives us peace, amen, from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. He went on to tell the Philippians, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. So this is Paul who established the church, amen. He said, I thank God for every remembrance of you. He knew that they had been called and that they had been saved. He said, he was praying for them. He said, always in every prayer of mine, for you, making requests with joy. So he was making requests. He was interceding on the behalf of the people of God, but he was interceding with joy. That he was happy about what God had did with the Philippians. Amen. He said, he said, for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. And he says, I'm confident. Amen. He said, being confident of this very thing that he which has begun a good work in you. Amen. So we have to look at that. God has created us and he has saved us and we are born again of the water and the spirit. He has begun a good work in us. Amen. That he will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. He's going to complete it. God doesn't start any work that he doesn't finish. We remember even in creation, he said, you know, when it was finished, that it was all, it's all good. Amen. God God, and even Jesus Christ, when he died on the cross, he went to Calvary. He said, it is finished. Amen. God doesn't start anything that he doesn't finish. So we have to be confident, just like Paul, 
being confident of this very thing that he that hath begun a good work. So God is the one that began the good work in us. Amen. Thank God for the sacrifice. Amen. He sent his only begotten son. Amen. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So if we believe in Jesus Christ and we did what he told us to do, we're in the kingdom. Amen. He said, you must be born again of the water and of the spirit to enter into the kingdom of God. So he began a good work in us. Amen. He began, he cleaned us up. Amen. And gave us purpose. Amen. Gave us hope. And not only that, but he gave us assignment. So he began something good in us. He said he places in the body as it pleases him. So wherever he places, he's doing a great work. Amen. God is doing a great work, a wonderful work because his kingdom is being built up. People are being edified. We are being saved. Amen. We are uh, magnifying the name of the Lord. Amen. We are exclaiming the goodness of the Lord, uh, spreading the gospel, maintaining good works. God is doing a great work in us. We are helping one another. We are loving other, one another. We are interceding for one another. Amen. We are helping. Amen. We are trying to bring in the law. So we are doing what God has called us to do. Amen. So we have to be confident of this very thing that he that began a good work in us, he's going to complete it. So it might seem like you get discouraged, might seem like there was a setback, something happened here, something happened there, you're afflicted here, you're afflicted there, whatever the case may be. Sometimes we are afflicted, you know, uh, we remember Paul, he said that he was given a thorn in the flesh because of the abundance of the knowledge that God had given him. And so uh, for that uh, thorn, he said he uh, sought the Lord and so thrice on it. He said, but the Lord told him, my grace is sufficient for thee. So we have to realize sometimes we want things to be a little bit different. But God said, my grace is sufficient. You're still winning the war. Amen. You're still winning the battle. So don't worry. Be encouraged. My grace is sufficient. Yes, you have a weakness. He said, but I'm going to be made strong in your weakness. You're going to see my strength in your weakness. Amen. I'm made strong. He said, so my grace is sufficient for you. Don't worry about so much your weakness. I'm not going to remove it, but you're going to be victorious through it. Amen. I told you earlier, the, the struggle is real. Amen. He said, but be encouraged. No weapon that's formed against you shall prosper. Amen. But God did that so Paul will be humble. Amen. He said, but my grace is sufficient. So we have to realize whatever we're going through, whatever the struggle is, that God is going to see us through it. And so don't be dismayed. Don't be discouraged. Amen. Because God is the lifter of your head. He's going to make good on whatever you're working. Just go with him one, by, one day at a time, step by step. God is giving you victory. Just keep moving forward. Amen. Paul said, I'm forgetting those things that are behind Behind, and I'm pressing toward the mark for the prize of the hog high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. Amen. So sometimes you have to forget what's in the back of you, what's in the past, and keep moving forward. Amen. Because no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Now, some people might try to bring up your past as a weapon, amen, to stop you from doing the work and say, I'm not worthy. I shouldn't be. No, none of us are worthy. Amen. None of us are worthy. But what did Paul say? He said, I'm the chief of sinners, but God showed his mercy in me first. Amen. None of us are worthy to do the work for the Lord. Amen. The Bible lets us know all sin and came short of the glory of God. He knew what we were before he called us. Amen. He know what sins he forgave. Amen. So we're not supposed to be looking back at those things. We're supposed to move on in God. Amen. Because everything is under the blood. Amen. Everything, every sin is under the blood. So, so nobody can pull anything up on me and say, well, you did this and you did that. Well, if you want to go deep sea diving, go on in the sea of forgetfulness and find that, you know, but God is not holding on to it. Amen. So we, God wants his people to be encouraged. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. The work must go on and God is intending to keep the work. Amen. He's going to continue it. Amen. We go to the book of Ephesians uh, and he tells us how to fight because we're in a warfare, right? And so Ephesians, uh, the Ephesian church was established by Paul and he later sent Timothy there to be the leader. And also he sent the letter of Ephesians by Tychicus, uh, the letter of encouragement. So the Ephesians was supposed to be a letter of encouragement to the people of God. So God is letting us know we might have struggles out here, but God is going to send some encouragement. Sometimes we need a boost. We need a shot in the arm. Get yourself together. Don't be crying. Woe is me. You know, get yourself up and get on and do what God told you to do. Amen. 
Uh, so Ephesians is a letter of encouragement to the saints. He warned the church uh, that the church was in a constant battle with the forces of darkness and that we need to use every spiritual weapon at our disposal. Amen. Even praise and prayer as weapons. Amen. So we have to remember, even though we have some weapons here that he displayed, we don't want to forget about prayer and we don't want to forget about praise. He says here in 10, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. He said, put on the whole armor of God. So if we're going to be soldiers, we can't be going into battle with half, halfway being dressed. Amen. He said, put on the whole armor of God. Why? That we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil because the devil is dirty. Amen. So people say like he hit below the belt. You know, he don't follow any rules. Amen. So we know that we see these sporting events and they have rules that you can't do this and you can't do this and you'll be disqualified. The devil doesn't care anything about any rules. He he doesn't have any rules. Remember, he was rebellious. He, he doesn't honor authority, amen? So he cares nothing about rules. He doesn't play fair, amen? But the Bible tells us what to do as the people of God. Put on the whole armor of God that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil because we, we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Amen. Wherefore, he said, because of all of this, take unto you the whole armor of God. So again, we can't be half dressed in this warfare that you may be able to withstand, uh, withstand in the evil day. And we definitely are in the evil days and having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, with your girds. These are, in other words, stand up. You're not, we're not laying down, amen. We got strength. Only through the Holy Ghost do we have this power to do this, amen. So we are equipped through the Holy Ghost, amen. Amen. We are equipped as people of God. We are equipped through the Holy Ghost. He says, stand, therefore, having your learns girded about with truth. So we have to be walking in truth. And having on the breastplate of righteousness, amen, breastplate of righteousness. The only thing that's our righteousness is the blood of Jesus. So we have to have the blood of Jesus, amen. So if you're not baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ, then be baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ. The only righteousness we can ever have is the blood of Jesus, amen. He said, have your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Walking in the gospel, amen, being peaceful, amen. amen. And above all, he said, Taking the shield of faith, amen? So can't go nowhere without faith, amen? Because if we don't have faith, the devil is looking to destroy us, amen? He said, taking the shield of faith, and this is what we're going to do with that shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, because the enemy is throwing some darts at the people of God. He try to affect your mind. He try to use people that are around you, whatever. He try to do anything to try to discourage you, but we have to have that field of, shape, field of shield of faith saying, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I believe the word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And, and knowing that God has said he that had begun a good work in us, he's going to perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. So until I leave this earth, I'm going to keep working for the Lord. I'm going to keep praying for his will and his direction. Amen. I'm going to keep believing in God. Amen. So I'm going to have the shield of faith wherewith we are able to quench all, it says not, not just some of the fiery darts, but all the fiery darts of the wicked, because the wicked throw some things at us, but we have to have faith in God that he will deliver us and protect us, amen? And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, have to have the word of God, helmet of salvation, make sure you're saved, amen? Amen. Praying always with all prayer. Here we go again, talking about our weapons. Prayer. Prayer is a weapon. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching. So we have to watch as well as pray. Sometimes people just say, I'm just praying, I'm praying, I'm praying. But you have to watch as well as pray. Amen. Watching there and too with all perseverance and all supplication, not just for ourselves, but for all saints. So we have to pray for one another. Amen. And then, and then he also said, and for me, that utterance may be given me, that God opened up my mouth to let me speak, that I might open my mouth boldly, amen, we got to speak boldly, to make known the mystery of the gospel. So we got to preach this gospel, amen, witness about the goodness of the Lord. He said, for which I am an ambassador, so he knew his assignment, I am an ambassador in bonds that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. So we have an assignment. We have to speak boldly. And the devil doesn't like us speaking boldly. Amen. So that's why he's trying to stop the work. Amen. 
The enemy would always like to try to stop the work, but we have to remember that God is with us. We have to be encouraged, amen, knowing that no weapon that's formed against us will prosper, amen. He began a good work in us, and he's going to complete it, amen. It's not without struggles, but if we have faith, we're going to make it through every battle, amen, and every struggle. We remember the testimonies of people, amen. Amen. There were people, amen, that were discouraged in their work for the Lord, amen, because the forces of evil were present. We remember Jeremiah, right? Jeremiah the prophet. They called him the weeping prophet, amen, but we know that he was not without trouble, amen, but God told him in the beginning, he said, set your face as a flint, you know, he says, don't be discouraged and don't don't, don't shriek in front of the people, amen, because I don't want you to be confounded. And so we know that Jeremiah had trouble, even with the people of God, amen. Here he is a prophet of God, speaking to the people of God, but when people of God want to walk in the flesh, they become the enemy, and the enemy can use them even as uh, evil forces, amen. And that's a shame in the body of, of Christ, you can have people that are working against you because they're not walking in the will of the Lord and they're not walking by faith, amen? And sometimes enemy come in, you know, they're, they're not really saved, you know, but they come in. But anyway, let's look what happened with Jeremiah. Jeremiah got so despondent with the people of God because he was preaching God's message and it was message of doom because of the sin of the people. And Jeremiah said, then I said, now here he is working for the Lord. We're telling you, people of God can get discouraged. But God said, don't you get discouraged. I have a work for you, and I started the work, and I'm going to finish the work. He said, he said, this is what Jeremiah said. Jeremiah said, I will not mention him. I will not make mention of him. Talking about God. Now, here's God's servant, his mouthpiece. He said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. But he went on to tell what happened when he made that decision. I'm not going to preach for God no more. I'm not going to be his prophet anymore. These people, you know, they're not doing right and they're not listening. Now they want to persecute me. But what happened with him? He said, but his word was in mine heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. And I was weary with forbearing. I tried to stop it, but I, I couldn't help it. He said, and I could not stay. Amen. His word was like a fire. So when God has put uh, an assignment on your life, uh, you might think that you can stop, but if you're really truly called to God, you're going to get up, even though you don't want to, you know, like, I'm not saying anything to these people anymore, but if that fire is, that, that word in you like a fire burning and shutting up in your bones, you're going to be able to get up and talk, amen, because he said he wasn't going to do it anymore, he said, for I heard the defaming of many, so here he is, a prophet, but he said, I heard the defaming of many. In other words, people were talking about him. Yeah, what you going to prophesy, Jeremiah, prophesy. So a lot of people get together in wrong, and they attack the righteous, amen? So Jeremiah was the righteous. He was God's spokesperson. So they couldn't kill uh, the one that sent the message, so they wanted to kill the messenger who was Jeremiah. They couldn't get to God and, and destroy God, you know? So they destroyed the prophet. They didn't like what was being said. He said, well, he heard the defaming of many. So they talked about uh, Jeremiah. He said, and fear was on every side because he was fearful because they, they were killing prophets back then. When people get set in their ways and don't want to walk according to the words of the Lord, they don't mind killing the prophet, you know. They say, and then they mocked him. They said, report, say they, and we will report it. So go ahead and report. What did God say? You know, he said, and not only that, but all my familiars watched for my heart. And so the people that I was around that knew me, they were waiting on something to stop with me. They were waiting on evil to befall me. It said, peradventure he will be enticed. So they was hoping for Jeremiah to fall. So it's no different today. People are people. Flesh hasn't changed. If people are walking in the flesh, you might be doing the will of God, but people are waiting on you to fall. They're waiting on you to slip up somewhere. Maybe he, he or she will go commit adultery or they'll do something, their marriage will break down, something, anything. They're wishing all kind of evil on people, you know, because they're preaching the word of God. So here Jeremiah is standing up here. He said his familiar friends, the ones that were around him, they were watching for him to stop. They were watching for him to have problems. He said, peradventure, he will be enticed and we shall prevail against him. So they wanted vengeance on him. But what did Jeremiah do to them? Jeremiah didn't do anything to them. All he did 
was preach the word, but they said they wanted to take revenge on him. Jeremiah didn't do anything but preach the word. So any preacher out there that's preaching what's true and what's right, you know, people don't like it. They're hoping for you to fall. They're hoping for something, something evil to befall you somewhere. Maybe they'll get COVID. Maybe this will happen. Maybe that'll happen, you know. But the Bible says what? No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Amen. God told Jeremiah way back then, I have made you a defense city. Amen. He said they're going to fight, but they're not going to prevail. Amen. So the weapon might form. So they put Jeremiah in prison, but he got out and he still was prophesying. Mm -hmm. So God's purpose was still fulfilled in Jeremiah's life, even though they tried to stop it. So the weapon was to put him in the dungeon and we put him in the dungeon. He ain't going to talk no more. You know, we're going to feed him, you know, the water of affliction, bread of affliction. We're going to treat Jeremiah real bad. We're going to talk about him. We're going to ostracize him, you know, but that didn't stop Jeremiah from doing God's will because he said it was like a fire. God's word was like a fire shut up in his bones. So if God has given this purpose, it's going to be like fire shut up in your bones. So you're going to do God's work even though uh, the weapons are forming. Amen. But God had already told Jeremiah at the beginning of his call. He said, they're going to fight against you, but they shall not prevail. Amen. No weapon formed is going to prosper. But going back to uh, Jeremiah, he said, all my familiar friends watch for my haughty saying, peradventure he will be enticed and we shall prevail against him and we shall take our revenge on him. But the Lord, here it goes again, but the Lord, see, that's why I say be encouraged. But the Lord was with me as a mighty, terrible one. So when God is with you, who can be against you? Amen. If God is for you, who can be against you? So be encouraged. Jeremiah said, but the Lord is with me as a mighty, terrible one. Therefore, my persecutors shall stumble. Watch out if you're persecuting the people of God. <laughs> my persecutors shall stumble. They shall not prevail. They shall be greatly ashamed. For they shall not prosper. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Now, this is Jeremiah, but the scripture we read was in Isaiah, right? He said, their everlasting confusion shall never be forgotten. So they're going to be confused and ashamed that try to stop the work of the Lord. Amen. He said, the gates of hell shall not prevail against the work of the Lord. Once God has given us assignment and a mission, you know, people trying to stop it, you know, trying to discourage. And the same thing happened with Paul, right? Okay. Uh, Paul said, I am now ready to be offered up, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. So God is going to make sure our course is finished. So the enemy tried to stop Paul on many different things. They beat him. They stoned him, threw him out the city. You know, they were, he was amongst false brethren. Amen. He didn't have, you know, some of the things he thought he needed naturally. And he still he perse he persevered. Amen. He still did what God told him to do. So sometimes we have to persevere even in hardships. Amen. He says, I have finished my course. Now, here he was, went to prison and everything. They're about to behead Paul. But the gates of hell didn't prevail, right? Because God gave him an assignment. He finished it. So even with all of the persecution, all the struggles, he finished his course. So we can be encouraged. He says, uh, he that hath began a good work in you is going to complete it. So God is going to complete every assignment in us if we walk with him by faith. We have to fight the good fight of faith and lay hold on eternal life. He said, I finished my course. I have kept the faith. He said, henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. So we get a crown of righteousness. We do what God tells us to do. We keep persevering. We keep speaking the word of the Lord. Whatever our assignment is, whether it's ushering, whether it's singing, uh, whether it's gifts of help, whether we are evangelists, whether we are pastors, teachers, prophets, whatever we are, keep doing it until the Lord come. He began a work. He's going to finish. He said, he said, which the Lord, he said, henceforth there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord. So we got a we got a crown waiting on us, crown of righteousness. Amen. Eternal life is waiting on us in the presence of the Lord. Amen. So which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And he goes on to let us know. And not to me only. So God's got eternal life for everybody that's willing to walk by faith and complete his work and do his word. He said, not to me only, but unto who? Unto all of them also who love his appearing. If we love the Lord and doing his work, God is going to have a crown of righteousness laid up for every one of us. Amen. So he completed his mission. Paul completed his mission. Jeremiah completed his mission. So we don't have to, to stop midway, you know, while we are on our mission. Amen. We have to know that God. Now, the greatest of all is Jesus Christ, right? 
Jesus Christ came. Now, the Bible lets us know that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Now, Jesus Christ being the Son of God, and they thought surely they could destroy Jesus Christ. Amen. They were going to kill him. They put him on the cross. Amen. But did that stop the, did that stop the mission of Christ? No, he died on the cross for the sins of the world. But what happened? On the third day, he rose again. Amen. With all power. Amen. He rose again with all power. So he completed his task, came down to die for the sins of the world. And yes, people fought against Jesus Christ so much so that they hung him on a tree. Amen. Amen. But God said, you're not going to defeat me. My the, the gates of hell shall not prevail against God's church. And so Jesus rose on the third day, even though they put him in the grave. They put him on the cross and they laid him in the grave. On the third day, he rose with all power. So let us know to be encouraged. Jesus Christ has gotten victory for all of us. Amen. He said, thanks be to God which giveth us the victory. Amen. So Jesus Christ gives us victory. He is victorious and so are we. So people of God, be encouraged. Amen. No matter what we're going through, no weapon that's formed against us is going to prosper. Amen. And we have to be confident that if Jesus started the work in us, he's going to complete the work. So we just have to have that shield of faith that's going to quench every fiery dart of the wicked so that we are victorious in the end. So weapons may be formed, but they're not going to prosper. Be confident in God and his word. Amen. Be encouraged because no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Amen. God bless you. That is the message on today.